Section 4.1 is the introduction to probability. So here we're just going to talk about all these basic concepts we need before we actually start finding probabilities. So the first thing that we want to look at is the concept of an event because it's going to make up some other important key events, key definitions, I don't know. So if you take the event of having one child, then this would be listed as either having a boy or a girl. So there's, you know, two ways to have one child. So the event is you have just a boy or you have just a girl. But if you want to look at the event of having two children, then one of the events, you know, one of the parts would be to have two boys or a boy and a girl. A girl and a boy is considered a different event, and you'll see that in a minute when we talk about uh, trees and sample spaces, and girl-girl. So there's four ways to have two children, even though it didn't necessarily instinctively feel that way. But now that you know what an event is, now we can go ahead and talk about a sample space. And this is all possible outcomes. So remember that we said an event is the things that can happen, and so a sample space is all of those events. Just having two boys would be a single event. And now that we know what an event is and what a sample space is made up of those, we can find probability. The chance of an event occurring. So, you know, the event is the single outcome, it's part of our sample space, and this is the probability of it happening. When probability is written symbolically, it's often written as P of E. So, you know, like function notation, F of X, but you can just think of it as P for probability, and then whatever event we're looking for is listed inside. So, if we take the question, Whoops. What is the probability of flipping a coin and getting tails? Then we'll go into some more details later on how to find it, but first we want to know what our sample space is, and so I've labeled it S, but it's all the ways I can flip a coin, heads or tails. That's really all that I can get. So the event is we want to get tails, right? And so if I'm looking for the event of a specific outcome, which we're just using E to be the event of tails, I get one half, which is the decimals 0.5 or 50%. And we'll go into that in more detail later. So as you're gonna see coming up later, um, knowing how many items in your sample space is gonna be very important to finding probability. One of the ways that you can determine how many items in your sample space is to create the entire sample space using what we refer to as a tree, and you'll see that in a minute. But basically it's a tree because you keep branching out for each next possible outcome in your event. So for question two, I'm asked to find, use a tree specifically, to find the sample space of having two children. Now we know the answer because we just mentioned it, but this is how you would have found that answer by using a tree. First, you'd write the different ways to have the first child, so I'm using kid, but your first kid is a boy or a girl. Now, I, and you could even actually start with, you know, a branch from there, but I don't know that you need that, but now I need to worry about having the second kid. And if I'd had a boy first, I could have a boy or a girl next. If I had a girl first, I could have a girl or a boy next. So now what I need to do is kind of traverse along all the branches of the tree. Like I'm going to start by going up and across the first two to get boy, boy as an outcome. Then I'm going to go back to boy and down to girl, boy, girl. And as I follow that process, I list the whole sample space. Now I'm just going to go ahead and copy it over to the answer box. Boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl. So let me have you go ahead and try to find the sample space for first spinning a weather vane. You know, that's a thing on your roof that's metal. I don't know that any of us really have one. <laughs> it's you know, like a chicken or a rooster. I don't know what it is. But we're just going to go with the four directions, north, east, south, and west. And we'll use the first letter of each of those instead of the whole word. 
And then your second part of this event is to toss a coin. So it's this combined process. Okay, so hopefully you've done it. Maybe you have the whole answer using a tree or not using a tree, although the directions asked you to use a tree. So it's always good to understand how a tree works. So the first thing that you should have done is listed your direction, north, east, west, and south. From here, you're gonna flip a coin. Heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails. Oh, kind of ran out of room for the tail at the end. And traverse my um, branches of my tree. Or maybe you didn't use a tree. Maybe you just kind of said north heads, north tails, east heads, east tails, etc. So then we're going to have WH for west heads, west tails, south heads, and south tails. So you should have eight items in your sample space. So now let's look at the properties of probabilities. There's really only one main probability property, which is all probabilities must be between zero and one. And notice I use less than or equal to in both of these because probability can be zero, probability can be one. And so we kind of list this that all probabilities must be between zero and one, just more of a verbal way of stating the symbols above. Keep in mind, that means 0% and 100% because we can also list those values as percentages. So what we care about too is what's called an impossible event and this has a probability of zero or listed as 0%. Like this class being labeled Econ 1, it will never happen. So that leaves us with the probability of a certain event and the certain event has probability 1, or 100%. That means it's definitely going to happen. This class will always be labeled STAT1.